when you look at the data of our student population, it's really inspiring to see how drastically complex our community is. I mean, to the level that you can have in your first year seminar, a student that is sitting down that had never heard of this place before, that student is gonna sit right next to a student that is a six, seven generation legacy of UC Berkeley and has never had to think about anything else. And they're sitting right next to each other in the same classroom, with the same professor, with the same assignments, with the same expectations of performing. We have a higher education model that was built on the needs of 18th century aristocrats, right, that got adjusted somewhat in the 19th century when we created the land-grant system and we created public institutions for the first time, but still it was for a very elite set of people with a very narrow definition of what education needed to be. And I think now we're trying to expand that definition and it's, it's exciting in the sense that we're creating a very different kind of university for the 21st century and I think one that is more able to actually speak to the truth of our full society. I can't set a goal of having my students today have the experience that I had 22 years ago. Like that's just not available to them, you know? Uh, the world is different, they're different, education is different, technology is different, so many things are different. But whatever I can do to recognize students as full human beings that bring culture, that bring language, that bring history, that bring socioeconomic realities, that bring realities of different gender expression, um, that bring struggles, you know, not just stories of privilege and comfort. I attended the Diversity Day. Walk into this room and there are several hundred students of color in this room. Berkeley stands out because Berkeley made very clear that in those moments that we mattered, they wanted us to know we mattered, though I've had the fortune of being at both public and private institutions and having done research and interacted with faculty in those places and there's just there's just something so incredibly special about about the research opportunities here at Berkeley that I, I would say are, are unmatched. People from a variety of different backgrounds can provide different insights and different thought processes that help really make our research um, you know, have greater application uh, or consider dimensions which are, are broader and not traditionally focused by being able to have that breadth. I think what you want to think about is um, how the university has historically operated. And um, it's an amazing research in university, so many Nobel Prize winners, um, so many accolades for our faculty, the amazing scholars who come to Berkeley as graduate students and as students, part of our DNA. Also is understanding that sometimes we ask um, our, our students and our staff faculty to meet the institution where the institution is, rather than the institution to have a vision of how we can meet um, our own community members, faculty, staff, and students where they're at. And who loses? The institution loses because we are not um, able to engage the um, brain trust in a, in fully of this institution. It's important, first of all, that I feel diversity and excellence are very closely tied together. And I believe that you learn more profoundly and if you have a diverse student population. But even more important than that, I don't think that the d demographics will mean much unless we have a culture in which there is broad support for inclusivity and equity. Inclusion might not even be enough because inclusion suggests that I am joining somebody else's thing. Someone is including me. Whereas belonging, we're suggesting the thing that I'm being a part of, I have a hand in co-creating. It's not just there. So, so the university is here. Come join the university as a guest, as, a co as opposed to come be part of the university and help create its future. I mean, this campus has a, a good long history of folks who felt marginalized speaking up. So free speech wasn't just about um, you know, being able to say what you want, but it was about being active, actively saying what you thought needed to be heard. Um, I think what's happened that has really changed, so, so folks had always sort of brought things up here, but I don't think they were heard the same way as they're heard now. 
Now the voices are heard as part of the conversation. What I'm, I'm equally interested in is vision. And, you know, it might seem odd to say that a blind person is interested in vision, um, but I think like many marginalized people, uh, we have um, sometimes a greater insight into mainstream cultures and, and values, uh, simply by virtue of the fact of being excluded. The most important thing, especially when there are so few of us, is that you're presented with opportunities to be the best student, the best researcher, and and find a, find your space and your place here uh, be, before you're asked to do any sort of service. Often I feel as though there are more things placed in front of graduate students of color and undergraduate students of color than their counterparts. Whenever we are dealing with classroom issues, it's important to talk about identity. And there's a fairly strong and historically rooted narrative that somehow, you know, you should leave your identity or, you know, your issues at the door because here we're going to talk about academics or whatever intellectual pursuit that we want. But I think it's becoming increasingly clear that that's just not how people work. That's not how students learn. That's not how scholars develop. People are whole entities and people are holistic beings that have identities and pressures and friends and they can't just separate things and leave them at the door. And my hope for this work is that students of color, students who come on campus and feel like they don't have a place here, are able to um, find, uh, find spaces that uh, where they feel at home, where they feel they can bring their full selves, where they can learn more about their personal identity and grow in their personal identity, where they can uh, bring uh, community people here and, and help them feel comfortable, um, where the university can learn from um, those events that community members are holding, that students are host holding just as much as students are learning from the classrooms that, um, that the university is providing. I think I feel most whole when I'm in community spaces and living at the intersections of all my identities, um, being queer, being Asian American, uh, being Chinese Vietnamese American, um, I think really brings me to do this work and um, I just think about all the people I love and the community that I do this work for um, and like how can I make this a world and a place that everyone feels whole and feels seen. I mean we're here to support students academically and wellness, but there's always this social justice undercurrent because it's Cal. We want students to have agency in the world around them. And so you learn about the history, it's not just history, it's also what are you going to do about it. If I didn't organize as a student, or if I didn't organize as a person in general, um, I would feel as if I would be sacrificing my own body, my own wellness, right? Uh, I have to fight for myself, and when I fight for myself, it, it, it automatically means I'm fighting for others. I believe the deepest challenge to the world is coming together and living in a diverse world. How we then live together is the challenge. If we don't figure that out, we don't have a world. And so yes, excellence seems to me is like, how do you actually make a world that's appropriate for human life in all of its stripes. It's, that's, that's the opportunity, mm -hmm. is how are we moving, how ENI is moving the campus so that the campus reflects all members of its community. From those who have been benefiting over the decades to those who have felt that the campus doesn't reflect them. Right? And that's where we need to get to. And to me, that's the work that we're doing.